Hello everyone and in this video we are going to learn how we can use enums in Swift data predicates. So let's go ahead and get started and we're also going to learn that how when you're trying to use it in a normal way they will not really work so we will have to find a little bit of a different way of using it. So here's our example. You can see that I have over here uh, this is called expense type right there. And in expense type, I have business and personal. I have also a title. I also have an expense item where the type is expense type, which is the enum. Now make sure that you mark your enum with uh, codable or else Swift data is not going to like it. So if I remove codable part and try to build the application, you will see that it actually fails. All right, so let's go ahead and get back codable. There we go. Okay, and we also have this picker view where I can select personal and business, but it doesn't really display anything right now. Now, for the previews, I am using a preview container that simply creates some dummy values. You can see that I have some dummy values. And the preview container is just for the previews. And that is the reason that we have marked this with in memory true. So this means that for previews, we're not really storing the items in the database. These items are just in the memory. Let's go back over here. Okay. So now the question actually becomes that we would have to make sure that we are displaying the items and we are also filtering the items. So for that, I'm gonna go ahead and create a separate struct over here and I would call it expense item search results. This is going to be a view it will have a body since it's a view and something over here, like the actual body. Over here, we are going to be passing in the expense type. So we'll just call it expense type, okay? And you can pass the expense type in the initializer. The whole purpose of the expense item search results is that it is going to display, you know, the results when you're selecting personal or business. I wouldn't even call it search results because we're not really searching, so I would just call it expense item results, okay? Over here, I can use query var expense item, and this can be expense item, great. Next, I can go ahead and display the expense item. Now, if I want to display all the expense items, I can simply go ahead and say expense items, make sure it's items, items. So there we go, expense item in. And then we will just go ahead and say expense item dot name, all right? Let's go ahead and uh, try to render this particular view. So this will be called expense type. We're gonna select in the selected expense type. And now you can see all the different expenses. Now these expenses that you see that are being displayed are based on our preview container. This is the model container that we created only for the previews. So these are all hard-coded items, as you can see. So let's go back now. All right. Now, when I go ahead and select business or personal, it doesn't really filter it out. And the reason is that we're not really doing any filtration. We are just displaying all the items, which is based on this particular query. Once you pass in the expense type to the expense item results, in the initializer, we can actually change the query. This is where we can actually dynamically 
change the filter or apply a filter. So I can say query and for the filter, I can say that the predicate will be that the actual expense item dot type is equals to equals to the expense type, the one that you actually passed in. We're not really sorting or animating anything, so we're just going to remove that part. Now, looking at this code, it looks pretty straightforward, right? I mean, it looks like, okay, we are passing in the type, whatever the type you're selecting, and we can hard code the type if you want. We can just go ahead and say business. It's a good idea to hard code these things when you're just testing it out. But you can see that even if I hard code it to business, which means that the expense type business should be selected, it doesn't really display anything in our screen. All right. So now the question is, okay, what's going on? Why doesn't it select that? I think inside, you know, the documentation or even the source code for surf data, the type itself, if we look at the type, you can see type is a type of expense type. It's not really able to extract the raw value and then compare it. Now you might say that, well, we can just go ahead and say raw value on both sides and then it will be able to compare it, right? I mean, the raw value will be something and it just crashes. If you look at the raw value, you'll see that the raw value of the expense type is integer. So even though it is integer, for some reason, it's not really working. And if we just leave it alone and we simply compare the expense type with the passed in expense type, well, in those cases, it does not really produce any result. So now the question is, well, how do we make sure that it works? I mean, you know, right now it's not really doing anything. So the workaround, and I'm gonna call this a workaround because it should work just like I'm typing right now. I mean, ideally it should work. So maybe that's one of the limitations or bugs, glitches, whatever you want to call it in Swift data, that this particular feature is not really built in. So what we can do is we can go back to our expense item and storing the type as expense type, instead of doing that, we can just store it as an integer, basically the raw value of the expense type. We will also have to change it in the constructor or initializer. So now the question becomes, okay, so now we have the expense item where the type is integer. And what should we do with this case? I mean, how do we apply this value? Well, you're already passing the expense type. All you need to do is to just say raw value. Okay, and when you pass in the raw value, the raw value is integer, the type is also integer, so that is going to work. If you go to the preview container, now it's complaining because the type is the raw value. So you will have to make sure that to update that. So I can go over here and say expense type dot whatever business dot raw value. Now I'm going to go ahead and update this quickly. I think I already have some code that I can paste over here and I can say over here expense type dot business dot raw value. All right. So everything is now kind of like in the form of raw value. All right. Because that is the requirement. We have updated the type from expense type to an integer. And that's why we have to update all of them. Okay, let's go back. And looking at this code now, whenever we select a business expense or a personal expense, we also need to make sure that we update this part so that we are passing in the selected expense type. So we'll just call it selected expense type. There we go. And I can iterate between, or I can go between like personal and business. So personal and business. So now you can see that our filter is actually working correctly. See that? Personal and business. Personal, business. All right. So this is great. And this is how you can perform filters 
based on the enum. Now, this is more of a workaround, as I have mentioned earlier on. And hopefully in the future, we should be able to just use the expense type and not, uh, not the integer value. Now, another thing that you can always do in the expense item, because it would be a good idea to get the expense type also, is to create the expense type as a computed property. You already have the type, so simply you can say expense type from a raw value and pass in the raw value. And if it is, it needed some default, you can pass personal or business as your default. So that will also allow you to expose the expense type property that you can use to display on the screen if you want to. So here you go. You now know how to perform filters where the predicate uh, is based on enums, and this will allow you to do it. We go ahead and first build the app just to make sure it's, yeah, there we go. And now we can play around with this app. Personal business, personal business. All right, so there you have it. Great. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and want to support my channel, then check out adamsharp.school. Over there, you can find many, many, many different courses. This is actually the one of the largest catalog for iOS development videos, and it covers everything that you can imagine for iOS development. I actually just published a brand new course on Skip Fundamentals. Skip is a framework that allows you to write native iOS and Android application using Swift and Swift UI. It's pretty cool. Check it out. Uh, full stack e-commerce app development. If you are looking to create full stack applications, then check out this course. And I have a lot of other courses, as you can see. Now, apart from the courses, I also host the workshops. Now, these are three hour workshops, hands on, on Zoom. And the first one is actually coming up, which is February 7th on Introduction to Vapor. Then we have Machine Learning Workshop on February 21st. And then we also have the Swift Fundamentals, uh, Swift Data Fundamentals Workshop on April 11th. So a lot of workshops are coming up. And the pricing of these workshops, you can actually see they are very affordable. Usually these workshops go for like $800 to $1,000. All right. But I want everyone to attend. So check out adamsharp.school. Share it. Thank you so much.